Hey there, Will Gibbons here, and unfortunately I'm a bit under the weather, but I still wanted to make time to record a brief tutorial on light layers in Keyshot. And if you're unfamiliar, light layers is Keyshot's version of light linking, which essentially allows you to choose which light sources affect certain objects within your scene. So in today's brief tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can use it and hopefully answer a few questions and maybe even give you some ideas on how you can improve your renderings moving forward. Without further ado, let's dive in. First off, let's take a look at how the scene is set up. In our scene tree, we have our plastic box. This is the item that we are rendering. If I zoom on out, you can see we have a backdrop ramp, and this is what we are casting light onto. And then the rest of the items in our scene tree are a bunch of physical lights called planar lights. This is the latest type of light you can find in Keyshot. They offer some really convenient positioning tools. So if you'd like some practice with those as well as using light layers, I strongly recommend you download the project file, which you can get for free on my website. Just log into the file vault and go ahead and download it. Now moving on over to the light layers panel, if you don't see this, you can go to tools and light layers, and then it should pop up. Now I have two light layers. One is called backdrop and one is called box. If I turn off the box light layer, all of the direct light cast from our light sources in our scene onto this box are disabled. Likewise, if I turn off the backdrop ramp light layer, then we don't have any direct light spilling onto it. Now I do want to point out something that could be a little confusing. You notice when I turn on the backdrop ramp, but we have the box light layer turned off, we're still getting some light spilling onto our object. And just to be clear, that's not light coming directly from these light sources, that is reflected light that has been bounced off of the backdrop. So light layers does not prevent reflected light from spilling onto an object. You would have to go a step further and use something like a ray mask in the material graph to prevent reflected light coming off of the backdrop. But that gets a little into the weeds. And likewise, if I turn off the backdrop light layer and we have the box light layer, we see a little bit of light spilling onto the ground plane. Again, that's because it's light reflected off of the box onto the backdrop ramp. So I just wanna be clear that if you're confused, that's what's going on there. So essentially we have a light layer for each item in our scene, our backdrop and our box that we want to light independently. Now, when we select a light layer, you can see all of the lights within our scene and which ones are enabled within it. What you don't see is what items within our scene are assigned to this layer. Now I've titled this box so we know that, well, the box is inside it. But if I click select parts with layer, we get an orange outline, which is a little bit hard to see here. If I were to turn off my plastic box, we should be able to see that orange outline. And we now know that that is the item that is assigned to this light layer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to rebuild this scene as quickly as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two light layers. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of the lights within our scene. We don't wanna delete the backdrop, just the light sources. So if we go to our environment, turn this guy up, we have just a plain boring scene here and I've got my camera right here. Okay, so here we are starting with a pretty boring flat startup HDRI. I'm gonna start by turning it down in brightness. Eventually we probably will turn it off entirely. And the first thing I wanna do is start by adding a light. Now I can do shift one, which is going to add a new planar light. And we have this new light positioning tool, which is pretty cool. My only complaint right now is that it's stuck here. I can't move it out of my way. I'm just gonna leave it in the corner for now. The way this works is I'm able to conveniently keep my camera here in the real-time view and move my light throughout the scene. And I'm gonna go to the geometry view on the left so you can kind of see how this light is moving in real time. The way I like to start by using this is I click on the normal mode usually, and I'll hold control and left click. And now that light has moved, we can see in the geometry view. So that is pointing exactly where I clicked. Now, of course it's way too bright and it's probably a little bit too close. So I can move it further away using my control and scroll and I can push it further away. Then from here, I like to go to orbit and while holding control and left clicking and dragging, as I drag my mouse across this product, we are basically orbiting the light around the product. So this is a very convenient way to keep my camera focused on the product and get our light position where we want it. So I'm gonna start by going ahead and illuminating the left side of the product. And I'm also getting some nice 
kind of anisotropic reflections on these little screws or pieces of hardware. So I like that. Now, as far as the brightness, again, we can control that using our control, shift, and scroll. So control, shift, scroll on your mouse wheel, and you can push that brightness up and down in real time. And that's really great because again, we can just focus on lighting here without having to move our camera. So that's the new planar lights. And we're gonna kind of rinse and repeat this process. The one thing I highly recommend is that we rename this light so we know what it is. This is on the left side of my product, so I'm gonna call it left. In fact, I'll call it box, because we're lighting the box, and I'll say left. So, if you wanna take the most direct path to learning Keyshot, then check out my Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. It's already helped hundreds of others level up, including designers from Nike, Dell, Logitech, Sonos, Garmin, Trek, Pepsi, and lots of others. See, I designed the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass to be the most comprehensive course available while still making it super easy to understand. And what makes it different is the unique combination of bite-sized feature-based videos coupled with follow-along project-based lessons. This course will help you build an intuitive understanding of how Keyshot works. Then you'll be able to create and explore within Keyshot without getting bogged down by the technical aspects of the software. My goal is to help you convert your ideas to digital images. When you enroll, you'll get access to over 100 video lessons, quizzes, an active comments section, private Discord server channel, and project files to maximize your learning. So check out the link in the description below to learn more. I hope to see you there. And I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to do shift one. And this time I'll do normal control left click. And now we're right on this nice chamfered surface. And I want to adjust it a little bit. So I'm going to go to orbit and hold in control. I'm just going to click and drag until I find it in the position I want it to. I'm thinking I like something like this. It's it's good to kind of highlight that chamfered surface. We're also getting a highlight on the part line and we're getting some light spilling onto the surface of the product. Now, as far as brightness, I think it's a little too bright, but it's also maybe just a little too close. So if I hold control and scroll out, you can see again in that real time or the geometry view, I'm moving it further away and it gets darker, of course. Uh, we can always increase the power. So understanding the correlation between light brightness and distance, the further the light is from our object, the less bright the light it casts onto the object will look. And so we need to compensate on that by um, making it brighter. So control, shift, and scrolling on the mouse wheel, I can now bring the light up quite a bit brighter, and that's going to help compensate. Another thing that we get by moving a light further away is we get a more crisp shadow. So we're starting to cast a shadow on the ground, which is pretty hard to see right now, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Lastly, if we want to make this light source bigger so that way we have more of a soft diffuse light we can actually go to the handles in the geometry view and i can hold shift and i can click and drag and now i've made the surface area of this light bigger which means it's going to spread out across the surface a little bit better so again i really like these new planar lights that's why i'm wanting to make sure that you understand how to use them we want to rename this one so i'll call this box right uh, I need something in the front. So we're getting a little bit flat here. So I'm gonna add a new planar light, shift one. And the repetition of this is really good for you. So I highly recommend it. If I don't go to normal mode, I can just hit control and left click. That works just fine too. And then switch into orbit mode. I want to kind of illuminate the surface so that we have some light. Uh, we wanna pick up some of the texture on there, but we want this to be pretty subtle, I'm thinking. So I'm gonna move this further away from the product. So I'm gonna hold control and scroll. I'm going to move it back and it's also still way too bright. So control shift scroll to bring down the brightness. And at this point, if you're saying, well, I kind of don't know which light is coming from where, we can actually toggle off the other two lights we have in our scene and just focus on the light that we're dialing in. So here with our light selected, I can do the adjust its brightness. I'm going to come down a little bit and perhaps this one, I want it to be a bit smaller which will help it pick up some of that texture on the surface. So I can go and even maybe make this a little bit smaller and that should help there. Uh, we're getting a lot of light reflected off this piece of hardware, which I don't really like. So I think I'm gonna play with the position so we're not getting too strong of a reflection on the hardware. And I think in general, I'm still gonna have to, maybe I bring it down toward the front actually. I'm thinking that's a little bit nicer, maybe even go a little bit lower. Now we're going to need two different lights, one for the front surface and one probably for the lower part. And I'm going to bring the brightness down here a little bit. I'll call this one 
box front or maybe top. Maybe I'll call it top because it kind of is the face of this. We're going to do the next one. Shift one and control left click to cast light on this surface here. I want to move this light further away, of course. So control shift and scroll. Oops. Nope. Control scroll. Still getting used to the hotkeys, but they don't they don't take too long. Now, in this case, I may want more of the corner here illuminated. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can maybe switch to normal and try this guy here. So that's probably placed it below my ground plane. So that's no good. So we'll go ahead and orbit it up, go off to the edge a little bit. I'm thinking that works pretty well. And again, the nice thing about this is I can just focus on lighting this box and not worry about the effects it's going to have on the background because the background we're going to light completely independently of this. So I like that position. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as like a little detail light. So I'll call this one box lower left. And I think we just need one more here on the right and then we'll move on. So shift one and click on this side here. I'm going to move it further away and I want to kind of orbit it around a little bit. So we come more from the side here. There we go. I'm thinking that's pretty good. I know we have some lights that already illuminate this chamfer. So let me go ahead and turn those on, see where we're at. So obviously we got a little too much light going on right now, but we'll fix that. Um, some of these are a little too bright. Now let's say you want to make some changes here. You could either double click on this light to change its material properties. You could also just go back into the light positioning tool and that will give you the ability to use those hotkeys again with these lights. So if I want to bring down the brightness, control shift and scroll, and I can drop the brightness of this particular light. I think this one on the upper right is a little too bright. So let's bring that one down. Is that working? Doesn't seem to be working. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Okay, so what I want to do is basically create enough contrast so that this product or object is not fully lit. Right now it's it's a little bit flat. So let's take that environment, bring it down to zero or yeah, zero brightness. That's going to darken the areas that are not being lit by lights the most. Uh, we're going to rename this planar light. We'll call it box um, lower right. And again, I think we're still a little too bright here. So this lower left one, I'm going to bring this guy down until I'm happy with that. And um, I think that's looking pretty decent. This guy here on the face, um, that's the top one. Maybe this is a little bit bright. Overall, I'm thinking that's pretty decent. And maybe we make this one even smaller still. So again, we can adjust the size right there in the geometry view very conveniently. All right. Okay, so I think I'm ready to start adding some backdrop lights. And to make this easier, I'm just going to temporarily turn off all of the box lights that we've added to our scene. This way, it'll be easy to see what our lights are doing to our backdrop. Because remember, none of these lights are going to be lighting our backdrop. So I'll press Shift-1 to add a new planar light. And I want to have it cast light into the background. So I'll go ahead and just control left click on the backdrop and we see we have light now. Of course, it's way too bright and I think I want to change the color too. So I'm going to go to this very orangey color and I'm going to change its position. So we'll go to orbit and I want it to kind of graze the backdrop, come in from the side, something like that. That looks pretty good. And I'll move it a little further away and I think... I think, I think something like that's pretty good. Maybe I'll go a little bit, adjust its position just a little bit so it, it goes a little bit higher and onto the, I want it to kind of cast in from the upper left a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. And then it may be just a little too bright. So I'm going to bring the brightness down a bit too, something like that. And I know it's a lot of orange, but when we are going to add another colored light to it, then it's going to really wash away a lot of that orange. And I'm going to go for that kind of orange blue scheme that I had before. So we'll go to our scene tab and I'm going to add, well, we'll rename this one real quick to backdrop left. And then I want to add another one, shift one. And we're going to just have this go straight down from the top. That way I'll get a nice shadow below my box. So I'm just going to use this um, control wheel and um, just keep pushing it until it's directly overhead as far as I want. And we can see that I'm starting to get that shadow down below there. If I want that shadow to be a little bit more prominent, then of course I need to make the light smaller, which we've already discussed. can just drag that down. And when I say more prominent, sorry, I should mention the edges, the sharpness of that shadow. If I make this really small, we'll get a nice sharp drop shadow. I think that's too small. So I'm going to bring that up. 
make that a little bit softer of an edge. There we go. And as far as the overall brightness and color, let's go ahead and try making this a bluish color. That works pretty well. I think this blue needs to be even bluer. So I'm just gonna drag that further to the right to exaggerate that and okay. And then I think, again, the placement of this orange light is off a little bit. I think it might need to come around the side a little bit. So if I wanna move this light over here, I can select it and I can get back into that light positioning tool and I can just kind of keep uh, orbiting around the backdrop until I'm happy with its position. So I'm just gonna keep playing with that and see what happens and see if I can get it somewhere I like. If this isn't getting to where I want it, um, notice that we are orbiting around a singular point in the geometry view. So I may need to move it actually, which we can do with the regular move tool. Um, so if I wanna do that, I can go over here and just click on this. And now I can also kind of push it into position as well. I think I really kind of need to come in from the side more. That's working pretty well. Let me go a little higher. And then I also want to take this light and maybe make it a little brighter. Let me see. So it's this one. I'm going to go maybe even a little more orange. And we can play around with its brightness and see how, how uh, much of an impact that has. I think that's good enough for now. At this point, I want to jump into our light layers. And if you don't have that tab open yet, you can go to tools and then light layers. Now I'm gonna create two light layers. One is gonna be called box, and I'm gonna create one called backdrop. And now we just basically assign our parts to each layer and tell it which lights we want it to affect. So if we go to box, I want to click on pick parts and I wanna choose the plastic box assembly, which should have the, the screws, the lid, the base, everything in there. And it seems like it worked because it went dark. And when we look here, we have all of our light sources and they're all turned off. I'm also remembering that we didn't name our final light, which is gonna be back, drop, top. So within our box light layer, I want to enable all of the box lights. And if we're not seeing anything in the real-time view, it's because they're still turned off from before. So if we turn all those back on, we now have our very well illuminated box. And now we just need to go to the backdrop, pick the part that is going to be affected by the backdrop, which is a backdrop ramp. And once again, we're gonna turn on the lights for the backdrop ramp. And we'll turn off environment because we don't care to have that in the mix. Uh, if we go to default, we can just turn that off. That uh, shouldn't have an effect on this. But now we're back to where we started when I gave you a rundown on how this was built. Uh, we basically have two light layers, one that effectively lights the box only, as well as the backdrop only. And if we go to the geometry view, we can see all the lights that we have in play. And now that they're assigned two light layers, we can go in and work on finessing these lights a little bit better if we want. So if this orange is a little too much, I can bring this guy back down so it's not having quite as much of an effect on my scene. I think that was a little too overpowering, but you get the gist. So there's a quick look at the light layers in Keyshot, as well as some practice with the planar lights. What do you think about these features? Are you gonna be using them? Are you excited about them? I think in scenarios where you have a lot of metallic objects and glass and maybe displays, things like that, this makes a lot of sense. I think they're gonna be pretty handy. Uh, if you have questions or requests for future tutorials, please drop them down below in a comment. And until next time, happy rendering.